Antelope Audio recently got in touch to ask us to review their new audio interface designed for both home and commercial studios, the Discrete 4 Pro Synergy Core, which brings pro-grade conversion, clocking, preamps, and hosted effects all served through a choice between a Thunderbolt 3 and a USB interface. As a disclaimer, Antelope have given us the interface to keep. However, we are, of course, entirely unbiased in our review and we're free to give our honest opinions as usual. Almost identical in design to the original Discrete 4, with a very well-finished solid metal case design, the new Pro version offers enhanced conversion, Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, and additional DSP power, as well as a virtual patch bay, and it's also available in an 8-channel unit. Measuring 26.1 cm by 20.8 by 4.4, the device should easily fit on most desktops and the weight of 1.7 kilos should ensure that it stays put when operating the controls. The Discrete 4 Pro offers plenty of connectivity with its four combi inputs allowing for mic line inputs, two of which offer high impedance inputs for guitars and other instruments. In addition to the four analog inputs, there are a further 10 digital inputs, six analog outputs, four headphone outputs, and 10 more channels on digital outputs. So theoretically, you can use up to 14 inputs and 20 outputs, useful if you need to patch in some hardware or record a full drum kit, for example. There's a pair of TRS outputs for your main monitors on the rear of the unit, as well as four balanced line outputs and a further four headphone outputs on the front panel, offering plenty of connectivity. When using the digital connectivity, the Discrete 4 Pro has one optical ADAT input and one output, and a further RCA, Speedif input and output, all found on the rear panel. Two word clock outputs also prominently feature on the unit, allowing for Antelope's renowned 64-bit clocking to act as a master for any I.O. expansion units. Finally, the Thunderbolt 3 and USB 2 interface sockets connect to your Mac or Windows PC for recording and monitoring. In terms of the general form factor of the interface, it's a decent size, but it's quite fiddly to use the encoder knob on the front of the unit. This knob controls the speaker and headphone monitoring volume as well as the preamp gain and various other settings and we'll come to our opinion on this very shortly. The interface as a whole has a small footprint but this means that the encoder knob is squeezed into quite a small space on the front plate and the distance between the bottom of the knob and the surface that the interface is sitting on is pretty minimal meaning your fingers have to be reasonably nimble to turn the encoder 360 degrees or else you'll be grazing your knuckles on the table. The 8-channel variant of the interface, the Discrete 8 Pro, is rack mountable and so this can somewhat negate this issue. Let's move on to the usability of the Discrete 4 Pro. The general setup of the device is supposedly easy according to their manual, however I can't personally vouch for this due to the nightmare I had. However, I don't imagine this will be the case for everyone as Antelope are of course a very well established brand and I would imagine that this was an outlying edge case. However, as always we are transparent in our reviews so this does need documenting. Installation consists of simply downloading the Antelope Launcher software accompanied by the relevant drivers needed for your operating system and it guides you through the installation and activation process. We first tried this on our Mac Mini M1, which is a brand new Mac with no third-party software installed other than Rosetta, which we had to download in order to run the Antelope software. And unfortunately, the installation crashed halfway through. Due to the high reliance on software for the hardware to operate, this unfortunately completely bricked the interface halfway through a firmware update and we were left stranded with a dead unit. Thankfully, Antelope's support team were able to resolve this using an unreleased installer version and we were back up and running after a very short support call and this was fixed within 24 hours of us reporting it. With the unit up and running, I spent a few weeks learning how it works before taking it out on a real recording. Firstly, we'll take a look at how the physical controls work on the front of the Discrete 4 Pro. On the central screen, by default, we see the input metering on a high detail display with the option to display other information through the menus, which we'll come to in just a moment. The large knob on the front is the main monitor control volume adjustment with a push to mute functionality. You can change what this knob controls by using the three buttons next to it. I must admit, at first it's quite confusing to remember what each of the three buttons do as each of them are multifunctional with no indicative marking on the unit's front faceplate and I found that every time I needed to adjust a setting I'd just be pressing buttons to see what happens until I find the control that I'm after. 
This isn't ideal if you're trying to quickly turn the microphone gain down to avoid ruining an unexpectedly loud recording take, or you need urgent access to some of the interface controls, but let's cover what those buttons actually do before coming to the clever solution for this problem. The top button accesses the input gain trim, whether it's set to mic, line, or instrument input, and the level adjustment can be made using the main rotary knob. Pushing the top button repeatedly moves through the inputs one through four. Pushing and holding the top button takes us to a system control menu. The first option is to power off the device. There's no hardware power switch on the device, so I actually found this function by accident whilst doing my process of press buttons until it works. Next on the menu is the clock source, which can be changed between a wide selection of sources. Ketchup, barbecue, mayonnaise. Internal, coaxial, word clock, ADAT, speedif, and USB. Pressing the rotary knob on a menu item selects the highlighted item and allows for a further rotation to switch through all of the available options. Sample rate is next on the system menu with choices of all the industry standard sample rates. Finally, a choice of peak meter options allows for the home screen to display a selection of information sources. As I mentioned, by default, the preamp input gain is displayed, but we can choose between preamps, computer playback, digital inputs, line out, monitoring, headphone levels, computer record levels, and digital outputs. I'm quite impressed with the number of monitoring choices offered by the display. Quite a few interfaces that we've tried before have left me longing for some kind of variable monitoring display, so this is a very welcome feature indeed. The middle button shows the connection information of the interface, starting with the clock sync, sample rate, which interface it's using, this can either be USB or Thunderbolt 3, the speedif, ADAT and comp connection statuses. I believe comp refers to the status of the connection to the computer, however, during my weeks of using the 4 Pro, I haven't actually seen anything on that display. Pressing the middle button once again returns us to the home screen, displaying the input metering. Pressing and holding the middle button for three seconds sends the device into standby mode to save power and save polar bears. The bottom button on the front panel allows us to adjust which monitoring level the rotary knob is controlling. There's a choice between the main monitor out, all four headphone outputs, and the line output. Pressing and holding this button simply iterates through the inputs. No hidden features or menus on this particular button. This brings us on to the computer control software, the discrete 4 Pro control panel. If remembering what each button on the front of the interface does is too difficult, then this is the software for you. The more I used the interface, the more impressed I was becoming with its flexibility and pretty comprehensive control system. At first, the control panel does seem a little daunting, but it's divided into useful sections to make it a little easier to swallow. Starting at the top, the clock source and sample rate can be adjusted as per the menu on the physical device, as well as a power button to quickly set the interface to standby mode. And we can adjust the input level of each of the four physical inputs of the interface. A large virtual gain knob allows us to replicate the functionality seen by the physical rotary knob on the front of the unit, adjusting the gain trim of each of the inputs. There's a 48 volt phantom power switch next to each of the gain knobs when the input is set to microphone. We can change the input source selection of each channel by clicking the white icon directly to the right of each input gain knob. There's a choice of microphone or line input on all four preamps but the first two also have the option of a high impedance instrument input. Above this source selection is the stereo link button, allowing for precise stereo microphone recordings with exact gain matching. At the bottom of the black panel are the mic emulation settings. Clicking this icon opens up some interesting options to tweak the sound of the onboard mic preamps to spice up your recordings. As you'd expect, these microphones require a specific Antelope microphone to work, which in this case are the Antelope Edge and Verge mics. On the mic modeling interface, we can choose phase inversion settings, phantom power settings, and the main feature, the mic voicing. There are five options to choose from, nothing, Verge, Edge Solo, Edge Duo, and Edge Quadro. Unfortunately, we don't have one of these microphones, so haven't been able to test it, but there are some great YouTube videos out there if you're interested in that kind of thing. Antelope's Discrete 4 Pro manual says that they cannot guarantee optimal or even usable results with other microphones when recording with the emulation software, but who knows, maybe that's something we test in a future video just for science. So that's the first section of the control panel covered. Like I said, the controls for this interface do go remarkably deep, so bear with me. 
On the main mixer section of the control panel, there are faders to control just about every type of channel you can think of. The first page shows the mixer, allowing for adjusting the monitoring outputs of each channel input. There are 32 channels in all, computer playback, four preamps, two speedif inputs, four mic emulation channels, eight ADAT inputs, 12 built-in FX outputs, and much more. Not only this, but each channel is customizable to allow for a fully flexible mixing layout. You aren't limited to having four preamps on the first four channels. You can have ADAT interspersed between channels, maybe an AFX channel here or there. The mixer is designed to be flexible and powerful, and it does seem to achieve this very well. On top of this, there are four 32 channel virtual mixers inside this little interface. Each mixer has its own independent layout and setup, so you can quickly jump between your own custom layout presets for recording, reamping, mixing, mastering, or any other use cases you can think of. Moving along the mixer pages, the next two pages are the digital output and line output pages, displaying what's coming out of the interface's physical output sockets, followed by a door input and output page, useful for keeping track of what's on which channel. Once again, making use of the 4Pro's excellent routing features, you can directly adjust what's going to the door on this page. If DAW input 1 needs to be preamp 1 to record a vocal input, but input 2 needs to be the AFX return for that vocal, that's totally possible. The best part is that all channel selection regarding placement on the mixer is easily done via drop-down menus, until you get to the master routing page, which we'll come to in a moment, which allows for even more creativity. Next, the AFX page. This is a really cool built-in digital effects rack with 16 channels of effects returns. As with the other pages, routing is possible, so a choice between applying the effects directly to the preamp signal, or perhaps to a door output for inline effects where mixing is incredibly easy. On each of the 16 effects racks, a pop-out screen allows for either building a custom effects rack by choosing from a selection of plugins in the drop-down window, ranging from dynamics, EQ and vintage preamps through to guitar amps and modulation, or you can choose a preset crafted by Antelope to give you a great starting point, all of which is of course tweakable. The ease of use of this effects rack means it may bring some mix engineers to begin mixing in a different way, perhaps inspiring some different mix decisions. Interestingly, you can also purchase the AFX to DAW software functionality, allowing for the built-in AFX plugins to be used natively in your DAW, which could be a nice time saver. In total, the Discrete 4 Pro has a selection of 37 analog modeled effects, all powered by a combination of DSP and FPGA chips to allow for real-time, zero latency operation. The 4 Pro allows for a total of up to 80 plugin instances across 16 virtual effects racks, meaning even your biggest sessions are more than likely to be able to fit into this mix rack alone. The Auraverb pop-out page allows for effect sends and returns to Antelope's algorithmic reverb, along with comprehensive reverb controls such as color, pre-delay, room size, and more. Once again, there is a wide variety of presets available, from guitar thickening reverbs through to room reverbs. Any of the 32 channels in the mixer can be sent through Auraverb. Up next, we come to the monitoring section. Here, we can adjust the monitoring output level of the main monitor speakers, as well as all four headphone outputs, choosing from all of the available sources we saw in the mixer. Finally, next to the four virtual mixer selection buttons, we find two layout choices, default and compact. Default allows for a more detailed and spacious view of each channel with full channel names at the top and a pan knob just below this. In default mode, eight channels can be viewed at once, but when using the compact view, all of this information is compressed horizontally to allow for all 32 channels to be on screen at once. Great for having a quick overview of everything that's passing through the interface, but not so great if you can't remember what each channel actually is. Just a channel number is shown on each channel strip, so if you can't remember that light blue is a preamp channel and red is an ADAT channel, you may get a bit confused here. I certainly was. You can, however, hover the mouse over any channel number to get the full name of the channel, but personally, I find it quicker and easier to stick to the default layout and just scroll along to whichever channel I need. In all, this is an incredibly powerful system, and to have that much flexibility at your fingertips is something I feel you could get used to very quickly, and then find yourself missing it when going back to any other interface with limited digital functionality. This is particularly useful for those with complex setups, and this is where the routing page comes in very useful. 
You can route any input to any output on this page, whether it's routing preamps directly into AFX inputs, then through to a mixer channel, or a computer playback channel directly into a headphone monitoring feed. This is such professional level routing for a desktop audio interface that once again, I'm pretty impressed. Routing is made possible by clicking on each subsequent input and output you'd like to connect. So it's such an easy system to learn that even a massive technophobe like Mark could probably learn it. Probably not, no. There's also a routing matrix in which you can quickly assign the inputs and outputs on a grid basis, which may be easier for some people to visualize. Simply double click the input source you're trying to assign and then the window expands to show all of the available channels. For example, if you're trying to assign the computer playback channels, then double clicking on computer playback opens up a 24 channel matrix in which you can simply align the correct channel with its vertical output counterpart to quickly patch the connection. This is fantastic for setting up very difficult, complicated configurations in which you may need many inputs going to many outputs simultaneously. They're all just a click away. It's worth noting that there is a significant latency between clicking and seeing any visual feedback. Obviously, this is the time it takes to switch an input or output routing. I waited for over two seconds between each click and sometimes found myself clicking again impatiently, waiting for something to happen, then finding out I'd now reversed what I just clicked on. So patience is definitely a virtue here. What I imagined to be just a simple interface when I first saw it turned out to be so much more with so many more features. Now that we've covered all the features, what do we think about the sound? The converters in this interface are simply fantastic. The sound coming out of my speakers was crystal clear and just as good as you would expect from any other professional interface at its price point. The enormous 130 dB dynamic range on the monitor outputs is simply astounding and it's perfect for engineers working on mixes with varying intensities. We took the Antelope interface to our local church once more to record our friend Jonathan playing the huge organ there and the combination of the aforementioned output converters with the 122 decibel mic input dynamic range meant we could capture everything from the quietest voices on the organ right up to the gargantuan roar of the 16 foot pipes, all with a low enough preamp noise floor to make for a super clean recording. Indeed, the noise floor of the building was actually way higher than that of the mic pre's. As mentioned earlier, we don't own any Antelope Edge or Verge microphones, so we couldn't make use of the onboard mic emulation software, but our two Lewitt LCT 1040s we used to capture the stereo field alongside the LCT 640TS for a rear surround mic worked wonderfully together and the clarity of the 4 Pro's preamps shines through in a recording situation like this. The recordings are very neutral and precisely what we were after when recording on this occasion. In terms of reliability, this interface has been rock solid so far and I've had no issues at any point except for the initial setup issues on my Mac. When using it both as my video editing interface and when recording music with it, I've been using my Windows PC and the software has worked perfectly. The Discrete 4 Pro costs around £1,200 in the UK and considering the sound of this interface, the flexibility of routing and the expansion possibilities, I can see myself using this interface as my main daily driver here in the studio for quite a while. Even if it takes you a while to get used to which button does what on the front panel, I keep forgetting, even now. It's a great interface and the fact that it has such a fantastic software counterpart means that you don't actually even need those multi-function buttons anymore. I would highly recommend this interface for any engineers looking for a small yet high quality recording setup with the possibility for expansion and possibly also for those engineers whose computers are being pushed to the edge of their power capacity. Those onboard plugins are a really cool addition that can inspire some creativity. We'll be using this interface to record a more contemporary style band scenario very soon and diving into the full range of software and FPGA plugins that come with it, so stay tuned for that one. Mark will also mix and master the track using only the Antelope ecosystem and give his opinion on it for mixing and mastering. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let us know what you think of the Discrete 4 Pro down in the comments. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, create, don't hate, and you'll see us in the next video. Oh, there's a fish.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>